A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 11, verse 1 to 6, and then verse 17 to 21. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to him saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard that he is, when Jesus heard this, he said, this illness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I love this story of the Gospel of John, the last of the signs that Jesus ever performed in the Gospel of John. We know there are seven signs in the Gospel of John, and the first sign is full of joy. It is in the context of the wedding. The last sign is in the context of a funeral. Look at that contrast. Jesus is present in the joyful moments of our lives. Jesus is present in the sad moments. Jesus is present in the joyful moments of our lives. Jesus is, more, is present in the sad moments of our lives. That is what John wants to tell us. He's present in the joyful moments of our lives when we don't even think about pain. When we are at the wedding in chapter two of the, in the, in chapter two of the Gospel of John, when he's invited at the wedding and he's present in chapter six, 11, in chapter 11 of the Gospel of John, when he even delays to go, he allows Lazarus to die. And people are even wondering, wait a minute, isn't this the family that he visits all the time? Isn't this the family that he frequents? He was just two miles away. He was in Jerusalem. And you know, I, I walk more than four miles a day in my exercises. So it is a distance that Jesus would have walked to just hear that his beloved friend was sick. He would have just walked from Jerusalem and come back to Bethany. He was making two trips sometimes in a day. He comes to Bethany and goes back to Jerusalem. He was able to do that. That is a family he so much loved. That is the family he was closest to after the apostles. But look at this family. The family 
Jesus was very close to experiences pain, experiences suffering. What is it telling us? And you may be close to Jesus, but we are not exempted from suffering. And it shouldn't be a scandal when we hear of men of God, men and women of God dying of COVID, close as they are to Jesus. They too succumb to death. But there is a difference here. They are dying with this conviction that this life is not the end and that they are dying to go and become our ambassadors up there as we fight for the end of this scourge of COVID. The Lord takes time to go. He hears. He hears of this. The message comes to him, the two sisters, Martha and Mary, send to him a message, your beloved friend is sick. The one you love is sick. But Jesus loved this family of Martha, Mary, and, and, and Lazarus in the same way. He loved the three of them the same way. Who are these three who have no father, who have no mother? Martha, Mary, and Lazarus represent the community of believers. We are all brothers and sisters. We have no father, we have no mother. Our only parent is God himself. That is why you will never hear of the father of Lazarus. You will never hear of uh, the father of, of Martha or Mary because the gospel, the gospel evangelist here, John, wants to say this family is all of us who are brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters in the family of God. And all of us go through pain. All of us go through those moments when we think that God is not attentive to what we are going through. God seems to be delaying to respond to us. Some of us here have seen the passing on of our own relatives. We bended our knees in prayer. We prayed, we begged our friend Jesus to come and heal those who are close to us and it never happened. Jesus allowed death for the glory of God to be revealed. You may not understand, you may not understand this, but he explains to us why that had to be allowed. He says, this sickness is not to end in death. But wait a minute, Lazarus died. Lazarus died, but why is he saying this sickness is not to end in death? We have lost so many of our priests to COVID. Why is he saying this sickness is not to end in death? He's telling us that there is some death we are referring to, the death that makes you die completely. As I was trying to make a joke, somebody's sending a message saying a person who was fully vaccinated of COVID died still of COVID. And then the, the, the doctor, one doctor said, uh, it's, it was good that he got vaccinated because the results that would have been worse. And somebody said, what is worse than death? I said, yeah, maybe he would have died, died more than he died. You know, for us believers, we do die, but we don't die. No, we pass on. We pass on because our life does. We pass on because our life does not end. It continues with our beloved friend. The raising of Lazarus was an indicator. It was a sign of how life will continue when you are still a friend of Jesus. 
We see in chapter 12, Lazarus at table with Jesus. We see him dining with Jesus. That is the eschatological meal. It is the meal in the life after. When you remain a friend of Jesus, even if you may die, you will have a life after that. And so we want to spare whatever may be happening today. We lose somebody and uh, something still continues happening regarding those who are suffering from COVID-19. We want to spare and start thinking that God is not responding to us. He is responding to us and he is going to show in due time that he is in charge when he tells us to take off our masks. And he's going to tell us that. The first reading is an encouragement in this regard. When uh, Peter encourages the Petrine community, the community that was getting also agitated and somehow losing patience that the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ was taking too long. It was towards the end of the century. They thought Jesus was going to come just a few years after his death. No. 50 years had passed and things were not happening. And the writer in the name of St. Peter tells the people, for we have to understand this, that to God a thousand years are like a single day. So let us not count the way we count, allow God to count for us. He will answer us tomorrow, but this tomorrow is not our tomorrow. We remain confident that when the time is, but we, we remain confident that when the time is right, that's a good thing. No? Is to us. When the time is right, is going to respond to us, and we have this faith, and it is this faith that has gathered us together. It is this faith that will make us continue praying until the end of this month, until the end of September, knowing that God in due time is going to respond to us. And so we move on with, with smiles in our faces because we are confident that this COVID-19 is not here to stay. Even if it may be here to stay, we are going to tame it. We have termed so many other sicknesses before. We are going to term it. We are going to term even that disease that is threatening, uh, that is threatening Ivory Coast right now, similar to Ebola. We are going to term all the other sicknesses that are affecting humanity with the help of God and with his confidence. We come before him asking him out of his mercy to be with us as we bend our knees to pray the divine mercy chaplet.